Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hope everybody's doing great. Indeed, we do, and welcome back. Yes, and we are rolling, and so make sure you are subscribed to all three channels, Evolutionary, E Arts, and Hearts Home. As we were sharing with the last video, we were basically making a note that, you know, Evolutionary came out uh, the week of the big eclipse back in August 2017. And for sure, to me, it felt like everything changed, and Cindy's been talking about that all day how that was huge. It was just a huge change in consciousness. You know, and I've had friends text me too, saying that they remember how their life seemed to take on a whole different tra trajectory when that happened, when that occurred. It, it was really something that was consciousness shifting, I feel. Yeah, and again, it's as above, so below, as within, so without when we are talking about celestial events that can make everything go dark, oh yeah, then most definitely that's going to impact the psyche. If light is information and that light is suddenly cut off, that's going to change the information in going. Absolutely. And we've also shared and we've had a lot of you guys chime in with interesting comments about the fact that the moon wasn't always there. And the moon was actually, you know, brought there. And when you think about it, it's placed in exactly the right spot to basically cause a total solar eclipse. It's at exactly the right spot. Just think about it. You know, a little further in, it, you know, it might not be able to stay there. It might end up impacting us a little farther out. And it, it also, you know, would affect the uh, amount of coverage it would have over the sun, but also could affect everything else uh, to a, a different degree. It obviously looks like the moon was placed exactly where it is on purpose. Some will say this shows, you know, the wisdom of the creator of, of everything, the creator, not the you know, beings that have tinkered with genetics or maybe, you know, done a little terraforming here and there. But the creator of this universe and perhaps, you know, even more than that. But when we look at the effects of the moon and, you know, of eclipses in general, they impact us in so many ways, you know, some consciously, some subconsciously. You know, I think the moon is just so extremely fascinating because it really controls so much of us. And I didn't know this, but I just learned recently, like even when you're doing some um, things for your for your personal health, like if you're going to do a parasite cleanse, to do the parasite cleanse on a full moon, and that makes it so much more effective. But the moon has the ability to push and pull <laughs> The, the tidal waves, the ocean on the planet and our bodies are made up of so much water. So it's definitely going to have a huge effect um, just in general, N not to mention when it's uh, tinkered with. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And then again, we have that procession of the equinoxes. We have this little wobble that the earth has. The earth is not straight up and down. It's at a 23 and a half degree tilt which from everything that we've gotten from the guides and from remote viewing, all this points back to the Younger Dryas extinction event when the moon was brought in and everything was, well, it, it was not the way it originally was. Everything was distorted. Everything was twisted. Now, the, the moon itself, as we've alluded to, is a fourth density uh well, it's a fourth density celestial body. There are other fourth density celestial bodies that we don't see, that we will be seeing. And there are others out there that we don't see that are actually uh, in a, a, the same vibratory state that we are. So we should be able to see them if it wasn't for the fact that what we look when we look up into the sky, there's a holographic overlay that blocks a lot of things from our vision. Because again, ships are still coming and going all the time, every single day. 
and yeah, at, at certain times, yeah, there may be motherships up there uh, that they don't want us paying attention to. Now, many of the galactic, intergalactic travelers coming and going have been of a slightly different density than our own, as that's what the control matrix on the planet, the dark control matrix, because there is a natural uh, control matrix that's put in place for this experience that we have here. But the dark control matrix, um, with their own agenda, you know, they have put up well, technology that, that kind of makes it hard for us to see what's really going on. But then again, with our own frequencies changing, our perceptive abilities are increasing. Again, light is ultimately information. So in some ways, when an eclipse happens, it's, it's blocking information from us. And in other ways, uh, there are shifts in our consciousness and perception that change and perhaps stay changed after eclipses definitely and i i think it is a way for evolution to uh, propel itself forward it just felt like the changes that my whole body and my whole system went through i mean i had chills i had shivers it was absolutely so palatable to me and then that seemed to put in a whole bunch of things <laughs> in motion and just really changed the trajectory of my life but even if you're doing something like um you know energy work mike and i do energy work and i also have the tuning forks but just to make these little tiny subtle adjustments can have sh changes in the way you perceive things and your percep perceptive abilities. If you remove a block where at one point you weren't able to see something in, from a certain way, you remove that block and then suddenly somebody can finally perceive that thing. But it's just so mind-blowing to me how everything is so kind of tied into one everything is wrapped together and you look at the moon and the moon is also psych cycles with a woman's menstrual cycle you know i i just think that's really fascinating how this stuff is so tied together absolutely and again we you know we have many layers to our bodies is as we have a physical body but we also have energy bodies and each one of our chakras is literally a gateway to another dimension What's fascinating is to look at people like clinical psychologists and they see, even though they're ingrained obviously in the Western system, they see the reality of how an eclipse can affect people psych you know, psychologically. It, just looking at the moon in general yet again, lunacy, lunatic, luna, you know, again, it has a huge effect, uh, effect on our consciousness. And as I've shared before, in Stregoria, Italian witchcraft, it's thought that um, when a witch dies, the soul goes up to the moon. And there are lords of karma, lords of karma that are also known uh, as the Grigori or the Watchers that watch from the moon everything that's happening here on the planet and all this is interrelated so you know again these these myths well they usually have some sort of basis in reality that's the thing that we should take from it and we we should also see how even people so ingrained in western science and western psychology can clearly see that humans obviously are affected by the moon and by eclipses. It, it's something that really does affect the psyche. And, you know, this is an article from Forever Consciousness that talks about it. it they obviously have fascinated people since the beginning of time, this says, but I would say since the beginning of this particular uh, era epic uh, since the last really big mass extinction event because again when we look to earth itself we see that there are metallic spheres that are two billion years old 
it, you know, deep in the strata of rocks. No, you know, Earth has been here as Tiamat for a very, very long time uh, and was reborn again as Earth. But there's been beings having experiences on this rock, <laughs> on this planet, on this construct for a very, very long time. In fact, you know, if the moon wasn't there, perhaps we would have an eternal springtime or, you know, something of that light as we would not have all the things that we take for granted, like the changing of the seasons, the weather patterns, all this would change dramatically. Science will tell you, oh, we couldn't exist without it. But then again, the political structure on the planet will tell you you can't exist without them guiding you. And we know we could do a lot better. Mm -hmm. They're going to tell you whatever they need to tell you. But, you know, Mother Nature is a very beautiful thing because even if you try to tip her out of balance, ultimately she is going to come back to a point of perfect balance. And what is that going to look like? What is that going to look like for us? Well, you know, we're going to be very different beings. And I think sometimes when you try to work on something, say you're, you're just you know, say you have trouble with, with the moon and how the moon is cyclical and you get moody and you're reactive toward those times. Well, guess what? You're going to learn about your emotions and you're going to learn about what triggers you and you're going to learn a lot about yourself and you're going to turn that negative somehow into a positive. And that's just the natural evolution of things. So they can try to do as much as they want to really throw us off, but we'll just keep coming back better and stronger and better and stronger. During a solar eclipse, there's a shift in the vibration frequency of energies on Earth. Your balance may be affected. Maybe you'll feel out of sorts. You may feel also extra sensitive to the emotions of others around you. Animals can actually sense this change in vibration, often display erratic behavior leading up to and during an eclipse. It was even observed that before a solar eclipse, spiders would dismantle their webs and build them up again once the eclipse had passed. With all of these subtle yet noticeable effects in the world around us, it's very likely that a solar eclipse is affecting us on a much deeper level than we realize. Our circadian rhythms are dependent on the rising and the setting of the sun. So, you know, obviously when you have darkness coming in, in the middle of the day, that can affect you as well. And, you know, I want to make a note on that because, again, with the technology that's always present around us, that really messes up our sleep. And it definitely affects the pineal gland, which, again, is giving us melatonin and serotonin. And, you know, again, melatonin is something that's so important for regulating sleep. Serotonin is a feel-good hormone, and so it can give us positivity and, and, and beneficial attitude boosts and so when we have like all these artificial lights and especially some of the frequencies like the blue lights that affect us uh, I mean the guides have told us you know don't work for you know don't get it don't be on the computers for two hours before you go to sleep and you will sleep much better much more soundly because again these lights are affecting our pineal glands so when you do unplug you might find that you're naturally getting up when the sun is rising and going to sleep when the sun is setting. Mm -hmm. You know, you, it, yeah, it is a lot better to get away from a lot of the technologies and moving away can help all of your body processes. It can help all of your natural processes, even your, your mood, because these lights come in and they block certain hormones and, you know, they, they block the melatonin and that's just really going to screw up your sleep and our children right now so many of them if they're in school or even if they're homeschooled they have to they make them be on a, a tablet or something way too many too many hours in the day absolutely and then of course you know for the animals it affects them as as well and you know many will get irritated or upset or or just be kind of spooked when it happens because it's something that's relatively out of out of the usual. Even though it does happen, uh, you know, every 18 months you got an eclipse somewhere. And what we have right now is we have this big October 
of 2023 eclipse and then six months later we're going to have the April of 2024 and absolutely these are monumental well they might be thought of as markers of which some of the great historical events are going to happen the side that many will unfortunately not pay attention to is what's happening with the changes of consciousness because absolutely August 2017 that eclipse changed everything and you know many believe that the beginning of the tribulation period quote unquote uh, began after that perhaps in September with the revelation 12 sign or what people interpreted as the revelation 12 sign but any way you want to look at it there was a shift there and we could see it too and yes again there is so much technology in play it's so hard to tell what is natural and what is not and that is part of the programming that's in effect is you know giving you the look of something natural happening meanwhile there is all the, this artificial influence to it yet what is still happening as long as we don't give in to um, you know some of the darker things that are out there that are meant to be huge stumbling blocks is that we are increasing in our ability to perceive the truth and that which is not the truth and we are increasing in our ability to communicate in more than one way even without words I know and the best way to learn to do that is watch your animals watch how they communicate watch how subtle the body language you know, learn to speak to your animals and you can really start to perfect that ability of you know uh, reading energies yeah so for for many people many people have started to do little gestures in unplugging themselves from the matrix and whether that is you know many people will have you know a Friday night movie night or whatever we used to do you know typical stuff way way back when my daughter was very young and that was you know several decades ago <laughs> and you know order pizza whatever the kids want okay pick out a movie go over to Blockbuster that type of stuff you know that that really is starting to date us and we could do things differently it could be okay well it's it's Friday night unplugging night you know once we get to quitting time all technology off maybe we could do a complete weekend of no technology you know everything is off and well we're maybe even lighting candles and reading books and spending more time you know there there are so many people in the south and out west uh, that do a lot of camping and other areas too. I mean, gosh, there's some amazing, beautiful places in northern New England, Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine, great camping. Uh, oh gosh, Michigan, uh, the upstate, the Upper Peninsula is a beautiful place. All over, you know, obviously Canada, everywhere. There's there's opportunity to camp and to unplug, and so. So often when we were rolling into different places camping, I mean, what, what I loved was when we were in New Mexico and we were camping where nobody else was at all. Nobody, you know, no, no rows of RVs all next to each other. We were just by ourselves and that was it. <laughs> and, you know, that, and just being out in the desert in Nevada by ourselves it was just amazing. I mean, we would just, you know, set up the chairs and watch the stars and and the moon. But it was especially fun when the moon wasn't in the sky because then we started to notice, hey, that's a ship. Okay, those are satellites, but that's a ship. And, you know, that was just fun and entertaining. But you think about it and people don't take the time to do these things enough. And, and yes, there are some that are outdoors people. And, and do do that on a regular basis. And they are going to have an advantage in, in the coming months and years ahead. Because to them, when, you know, the grid goes down for six months or whatever it is, you know, hey, kids, we're going for an extended camping trip at home. You know, I mean, it, it's not a bad idea to have, make sure you're good and prepared. <laughs> make sure you have all the things that you need. Just do a nice, friendly family drill. 
And all it's going to do is bring you closer in tune with the planet and the natural harmonies and frequencies of nature. Indeed. So, as always, guys, much love. Thank you for your support over on Patreon and Ko-Fi. Uh, we couldn't do it without your support over there. And please do check out Evolutionary Energy Arts. Uh, dot com as well if you haven't you can reach us at evolutionary energy arts at gmail.com if you need to make an appointment thanks for your patience too with us getting back to you as as often we are just basically moving still and relaying stuff god bless and namaste namaste